Hi, so my name is Gabby. I am a UX designer in New York City. Um, but my hobby, or not my hobby, but like the thing that I do on the weekend when other people are brunching and doing cool New York things, I go and I hang out with little kids. Uh, and I've always found it like very, int I've always, I was always a person in my house who like uh, changed the VCR and like set up the router. So I've never been afraid of technology until I got to ITP. And if you don't know anything about this program, it's like a weird, crazy place where you do, where you learn how to use your hands and how to connect things that are in the digital world to the physical world. So my first interaction um, connecting things in the physical world to, to the digital world was like an Arduino. And if you've never seen it, it's just like a tiny little computer that you program and it like, like lights up a, uh, an LED or makes, makes something move in the real world. And that was like, wow, that's the most amazing thing I've ever done in my life and I just turned on a light. And that was super exciting for me. And that kind of feeling of trying to share this emotion um, with other people has followed me throughout my life. I've done a lot of like um, education stuff on the side. I did Model UN when I was like in high school and college. And now I found this like cool thing that I can teach to people that is actually relevant in the present and it's 3D printing. Um, so I became a volunteer with this organi organization called HTINK and I can uh, put you in touch with them at the end of the talk if, if you wanna like work with them. They do after school STEM programs and sometimes go like do workshops on the weekends. But the way that we teach kids about 3D printing is um, it's, it's twofold. We use a software called Tinkercad, uh, which is a 3D rendering web-based software that was acquired by Autodesk a couple of years ago. But um, like we, we try to do simple stuff at the beginning. So for, like one of the things that I really like, and this is just a screenshot from Tinkercad, is um, trying to, like, they really wanna, they wanna make like a robot or a castle. And I'm like, no, no, take down a notch. Make, make something simple that, that can be like uh, shapes that you stack. And it's really difficult to like kind of rein in all of that emotion at the beginning. But um, I find that once you, you like set the stage over here, they, they're like, oh, okay, I get it. So I'm just like kind of dragging stuff to the stage. And something that you might have noticed is that when you're building something, you something that is unexpected, at least it was for me and it was for like kids when we were trying to print stuff, is that you have to build the stuff from the bottom up because guess what? There's gravity and printers print like that. So sometimes when kids want to build like a tree, they're like, no, 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 you got to flip the tree. And he, they're like, why? He's like, because it's the, the, the plastic is going to come out this way. Like, what plastic? We're just going to print it, aren't we? And I'm like, yeah, you know what? Let, let's talk about it later. So for example, um, if you're trying to print this table, if you've never uh, printed anything on a MakerBot, you, you got to like literally flip the table so that it, you can actually print it because it's going to be like extruding, extruding things into the air. It's going to be falling. As people are like super confused right now. I'm gonna stop talking about flipping tables. Anyway, so the kids, um, it's really exciting uh, to see them be like, oh my god, I have this like little thing on on the web, and and now now we're gonna print it. So um, I think that it's it's like another level of disappointment managing when they're really strong because they want to build like something really cool, and you're like, no, actually the 3D printers that are commercially available and that we can afford for the school are actually kind of small and. A little, a little crappy sometimes. Um, at least I've had, I've worked with the replicators that were assembled by us and not assembled by MakerBot, and they're a little finicky. Um, they're from like 2012 or 11, so it's it's difficult because even though your design looks amazing on the screen, when it when it gets printed out, it, it looks a little bit like this, and you begin to appreciate how amazingly precise Lego is. And when it comes to creativity and and small children, you you don't wanna kind of like make any sacrifices. You want the things to look amazing. And I will say that like MakerBot might not be like that precise when you're using it in an educational environment, but you can do stuff like this. You, you can connect your Legos to your Kinects and to other stuff and that's really cool. So it's about managing expect expectation, which is so terrible to do with middle school students. But anyway, in my opinion, like all of the large stuff that, um, that we see in the news and the media about 3D printing, about 3D printing houses and making modular homes is like, exciting and maybe the future but i my in my experience this is the really exciting stuff with little kids just just <laughs> just making something that that you design and, and you put thought into it and you understand how it's going to translate from something that doesn't exist to something that's material and like had had steps in the and watching it like i love that kid like watch he's like what is going on um is is really really special um and that's pretty much all i wanted to talk about how it's like Cool. It doesn't matter that if we don't get to like 3D print homes. Like just learning, like teaching young people that we like how things are made 
and the design process that goes into it is like exciting enough. That's it, and that's me. You can send me an email if you want, and if you want to like volunteer with Tink, let me know as well.